Hey everybody, Doug here. I want to do a video here today about the HyperDeck models uh, of disc recorders that are available in the Blackmagic Design product lineup. I'm going to start with the newest model, the Shuttle HD, and work my way all the way up to the Pro 4K. It's on the bottom of the stack here. Talk about what you get with each model, which which features are added at different levels, and in some cases where things are taken away. And I'm also going to include a couple of older models because they have some things that are not available in the newer ones. So maybe one of those is better for your particular application, give you some features that you actually need that are no longer available. All right, let's start with a baby of the family, both in terms of size and in terms of its age. This product has only been out a few weeks. It was announced the uh, week before NAB this year. This is the Shuttle HD, HyperDeck Shuttle HD. So as it's applied by name, it's HD only and it has a nice big shuttle dial, which is unique to this particular product. This is an HDMI only device. You can see it has an HDMI input and HDMI output. Input does imply, yes, it is a, not only capable of playing back, but also recording. So you can use this to record video as well as use it for playback. On the back, we have a slot for an SD card. Uh, you can also connect up a USB-C uh, flash drive and the external disk port here. And also has an Ethernet port. It runs off of 12 volt DC like many of Blackmagic products and includes the power supply, of course. On the top, we've got a range of buttons here. So we've got transport controls. And we also have a menu and set button. One of the big things that's missing from this compared to the others is obviously a screen. And so in order to do anything with this, you actually have to connect up a display and navigate the menus on that connected display. All right, so I'm going to have some footage of a recent event that I shot playing in the background here off, this, off the Shuttle HD as I navigate the menu here. But uh, in order to get to the menu, you press the menu button that's on there, and then the menu shows up there in the lower left-hand corner. Now, this is essentially the same menu functions that you get on the other HyperDex, but it's obviously done on screen because the unit itself does not have a screen. Now, that imposes some interesting challenges, uh, particularly because you're not getting any sort of feedback. You don't necessarily know what the settings on the device are. Uh, if you want to see what's going on here, you need to connect another monitor. You can certainly connect this up to a switcher and then have the video of this going to your preview uh, pane of your, your multi-view. But if you go any smaller than the quarter screen, so if you drop down to the 1 16th screen uh, version of that, the text is too small to read. So if you want to be able to navigate the menus on this, you're going to want to have an external monitor or at a very minimum use the preview feature on a connected switcher. Now, one of the things that's very nice about having this nice big dial on here is it makes it easier to navigate through your clips. Now, if you want to change from one clip to another, you probably want to use the previous and next uh, buttons that are here on the transport controls. But once you get to a single clip and want to navigate within that, you're going to want to take advantage of some of these other features that are on here. So you press the scroll button here, and that will navigate quickly through the clip. If you want to go slowly, you can press the jog, and that will go essentially one frame at a time. There we go. Yeah, so I'm back up here. So it allows you to navigate one frame at a time. But it also has another mode here where if you press both of those buttons together, what you're controlling here by adjusting the dial is playback speed. So if I speed it up or slow it down, or I can even go in reverse. Now, there's something that the other ones can do as well, but having the nice big dial on here makes that kind of unique to this particular product. Now, with that said, you, because you don't have a screen on the device, you don't get any feedback as to what speed you're currently playing. So if you're trying to go at half speed or third speed and you need a, speci need a specific speed, uh, it's going to be harder to find that without having that feedback of a screen. Uh, you can always play back at normal speed by just tapping the, pl the play button there. So no matter what speed you're playing at, so if I go ahead and press these and then play it, play it at a nice slow speed here. I can just tap the play button, it'll return to, to full speed. So if full speed is the only speed that you're worried about, then you can actually control that directly from the unit itself. Now, one of the other things that's unique to this particular product, and it's not available on any of the others, is something that's just announced. It's called the teleprompter mode. So if I go into the menu here and then navigate down to the codec, instead of choosing ProRes, which is what I had recorded this clip in, I navigate all the way to the bottom. There's a teleprompter mode, so I'm going to go ahead and press set, and the unit reboots, and at this point you're able to view RTF or plain text files that are on the unit. And then effectively what's happening is that that text file is treated as if it's a video file. So I can press play, 
turn off the menu here. We can press play and it will play. If I need to speed up or slow down, I can press these two buttons together and then control the speed using the jog dial, like so. Press fast, slow, whatever you want. I can also press put it in scroll mode so you're able to navigate through a document pretty quickly or jog to just go essentially the equivalent of one frame at a time, just a little bit at a time. That's pretty nice. Or play at the one speed that they consider kind of the default. Now you have some customization here. So if I go back into the menu, we can go over to the monitor tab. There are some settings in here you can set for font size, for example. So if I want to blow that up, make that make that bigger. Let's go, all the, let's go up to, say, 450 here. There we go, 450%. And then you can control margins. It also has the ability to reverse, uh, flip horizontally and vertically. So there's there's your horizontal flip, and here is your vertical flip, which is really nice if you're connecting this device directly to a monitor that's on, it's connected to, well, it's basically on a camera, because you know you have to reverse horizontally in order to make that work. But at the same time, I want to mention that this may not necessarily be quite as useful. That feature might not be quite as useful as you might think. Uh, if you have somebody who's operating a teleprompter, they have their own monitor that's separate from the one that's being used by talent. Having the flip feature built into this unit is not that handy because you need to make sure that the person who's operating, operating the prompter is seeing things in the right orientation. So you need to flip it after it's being visible in, in the signal chain, after it's visible by the teleprompter operator. So anyway, it's kind of a nice feature that's in there. Uh, however, it does seem kind of half-baked. It's like they didn't really fully think it through. Hopefully in some firmware updates, they'll actually improve this quite a bit. One of the big limitations that this has is it's not able to, you're not able to update files on the fly, so if, uh, which is very common on, on, on set. You know, somebody gives you a new version of a script, it's going to be a little bit more work to get that into this than it would be if you were using a computer for a teleprompter. There are also free teleprompter websites out there as well, so, so it's another option. So if you like that feature, of the shuttle HD, but find some of the other things that are about it a little bit too limiting, then you can still obviously use a computer for doing your prompting there. All right, other than that, the other feature that's unique to this one, it's just been announced, is that we know that this is gonna be incorporated into the Blackmagic Cloud functionality. So you'll be able to pull down video clips from cloud storage and play them on the device without having to have them in your own local storage. We don't know if that's coming to other HyperDex. We kind of assume that it probably will be, but we don't know that for sure as not being confirmed at this particular point in time. What's unique about this one compared to the others, it's got the teleprompter feature. The connections on this are exclusively HDMI, so there's no SDI on here. And we know for sure that this one's going to have the ability to play video files off of some of the Blackmagic Cloud products coming up in the future. Now, the video codecs that are actually supported by the Shuttle HD include ProRes, DNX HD, H.264, and of course the teleprompter feature, which is unique to this particular model. Now, pricing on this particular unit is currently $495, which in my opinion is a little on the high side, but still, it's a great product and you're not going to go wrong with this. Okay, the next model in the lineup is the HyperDeck Studio HD Mini. This is a one-third rack unit form factor, so you can fit three of these side by side in a single rack space. Uh, obviously, this includes a screen, as all the other ones that we're going to look at here today. Uh, you have a lot of front panel controls. Taking a look at the back of this unit, we've got quite a few, few connections that are available here. We have an IEC power input. And we also have a 12 volt power input, and those can be connected up at the same time, which gives you some level of redundancy. So if one goes, one goes out, you can always run on the other. It has a remote jack. This is an RS-422 connection. This is a way of controlling the deck, deck remotely. That's a very common protocol in the video production industry. A lot of different controllers out there that will work with this. We have an Ethernet jack, which is one gigabit, same as the other models in the lineup for the most part. A couple of exceptions there, uh, which allows you to upload and download files at up to one gigabit per second using FTP. Move over here. These are reference in and out. This is basically a way of gen locking this device. And for reference, that uh, gen lock feature is really only relevant for playback. It's not really necessary for recording. The device does, all these devices actually have frame syncs in them built, built in, so it doesn't matter what your reference is on your source. It'll still be able to record. The reference in here actually is used to make sure that when you're playing back that the output signal is in sync with your other sources. We also have time code in and out on this device. This is LTC, it's a linear time code, which is basically an audio signal, which indicates 
how many hours, minutes, seconds, and frames you are into recording, which allows it makes it makes it much easier to synchronize your recordings in post production. And you can either record timecode from your SDI or, or your SDI video source or from the timecode input, depending on what, what your needs are. Come over here, we have an HDMI output, which is really handy if you're going into a device which only has HDMI, like the A10 Minis, for example. We have an external disconnection, which allows you to play back or record video on a USB-C based a USB flash drive of some kind. And then we have our main SDI input and an SDI output for getting video into or out of the device. So that's it for the, for the back. Let's take a look at the front. We've got two SD card slots here on the left, and that allows you to fail over from one card to another. This does not have the ability to record to both slots simultaneously. This is really there as a way to allow you to record continuously, so when one card fills up, it automatically spills over to the other. At that point, you can replace the, the card in slot one, and then when two cards, uh, card two uh, fills up, you're able to then fail back over to card one. So basically, you're able to record endlessly just by swapping between those two cards. And then we have our transport control, so play, stop, record, a search for navigating through your video clips uh, for forward and backwards in terms of navigating to previous or, or next clip, menu and set buttons for navigating the menu. Of course, we have our LCD screen there, and then we have a dial on here for navigating menu and for navigate, yeah, navigating through video clips. So let me hook this up, and we'll take a look at how that works. Now, I've put the same SD card in here that I was using in the Shuttle HD. So it's the same video codecs that are supported by both, minus the ability to do teleprompter. Uh, and I've got the same video playing that I was playing before. So you have universal compatibility with, with uh, files across most of the product lineup, with a couple of small exceptions that I'll, I'll mention along the way. All right, so we have the same search, search capabilities on here that we have with the shuttle, but it's done a little bit differently. So we have a single button here to change the different search modes. So right now we're just playing at normal speed. And if I press the search button, that actually puts it into pause mode. And then from there, I can turn the dial, and that's basically our jog mode, so we're navigating essentially one frame at a time. Now if I press the search button one more time, that puts me into scroll mode, and now we see we're navigating one second at a time. And if I press search one more time, that puts it into playback speed control mode, which allows you to speed up and slow down. So right now I'm playing at one half normal speed, turn it left, that goes to a quarter, and then I can turn it the other direction and then go to three quarter, one times, two times, all the way up to 50 times normal speed. Now, unlike some of the other models in the lineup, the only way to that, get to that 50 times speed to, in order to navigate between, uh, navigate within a clip, you have to press the search button three times to get there. So there's no fast forward and rewind buttons on this particular model. You have to step up to higher end models to get that. However, you do have the ability to get to search, search features with the search button there. Now, as mentioned, this actually is a rack mount unit, so you can fit three of these in a shelf. Blackmagic has a couple different shelf options that you can get for this. They have a Terranex mini shelf, and then they have the universal rack shelf. This will work in either one of those things. You can fit three of these side by side, and it allows you to have very high density for video playback and recording. So I personally have a whole bunch of units that are this size and love this form factor. I'm very excited to be able to put so much equipment in a very, very small space. Now, pricing on this one is the same as the Shuttle HD. This one unit comes in at $495, and this has been available for several months now. It's pretty easy to get a hold of. Stock is available pretty much anywhere. All right, the next unit that I wanted to take a look at is actually one that's been discontinued. It's no longer available as a new product, but they're pretty easy to pick up in, in the used market. I see these things on eBay quite often, and you find them other places as well. This is a unit that was announced, I believe, in 2017. This is the HyperDeck Studio Mini. This, again, is a one-third rack unit, uh, rack-mounted product, obviously. It's actually in the same form factor and looks very, very similar to the HyperDeck Studio Mini HD, but there are some significant feature differences between the two, and I think in a lot of situations, the older model offers a better value. And the first one of those is actually, this works with 4K. So the, the HD, obviously, it just only does high definition. It doesn't do 4K. The older model will do, high de will, do will do 4K video at up to 30 frames per second. It also offers a unique ability here on the back. It has two outputs on the SDI, and what that's used for is to basically give you separate fill and key. So if you wanted to do transparent graphics during playback, this unit is able to do that, whereas the newer model is not. So 
That's a unique feature that's only available on this unit in this particular size. So if you want to have high density, a lot of recorders in a small space, and you want to be able to have alpha channels with separate fill and key, this is something that only the older HyperDeck Studio Mini offers. And that's the reason I wanted to bring it up, because you're able to get some features with this one that you're not able to get in this same form factor with the newer one. So even though this is no longer available, it's still, I think, a very viable product. It still is going to work, work just fine for you. So if you need 4K in a small form, form factor, you, or you need alpha, alpha channel playback in a small form factor, this product offers that uniquely. It's not available in any others. I should mention one thing about the alpha, and that's going to be true across almost all the units in this lineup. When you start to use, take advantage of the alpha capability, your available bandwidth for video playback actually gets cut in half. So even though this thing will record 4K uh, at up to 30 frames per second, once you switch to doing that with an alpha channel, your resolution, your frame rate drops all the way down to 1080p at 60 frames per second as your maximum. So keep in mind, that in mind as I talk about some of the uni other units because that same thing is true across those as well. But anyway, so this is the... HyperDeck Studio Mini it was something that was announced, I believe, in 2017. It's been discontinued with the announcement of the new one, but I think still represents a great value. These things are selling for roughly the same price as this newer one, but you're getting, again, getting that 4K and you're getting the option to do transparency. Video codec support is basically the same, although I have had some trouble with H.264 recording at high bit rate on these units. It doesn't seem to like to do that very much. RS the newer ones seem to handle that just fine. So anyway, yeah, that's another product offering that is available in the used market. The next one that I want to take a look at is the HyperDeck Studio HD Plus. This is a current model. This is currently available. This is in a somewhat larger form factor. So I left out my Studio Mini, HyperDeck Studio Mini, the older model here, for some comparisons because these two are extremely similar in, capable, in, in terms of what they're capable of, and they were actually announced at the same price, so both are $695. So, um, big, obviously big difference here is that this is a larger form factor, and the main reason they've done that is they provided some additional connections on the back. So, if we take a look at the back of the unit, move this one out of the way here, we have IEC power, we have a 12 volt input, on an XLR, 4-pin XLR. We've got our one gigabit ethernet. We have a remote in and a remote out. That allows you to, to control multiple, uh, basically have commands cascade from one unit to another. We have a, another unique feature here, which is a monitor out. And I'm, I'll hook that up here in a minute and let you see what that's all about. It also has the same reference in and out and time code in and out that are available on the HyperDeck Studio HD Mini. We add an HDMI input on this, which is not available on the, the HyperDeck Studio HD Mini. And then we also add the same A and B SDI outputs that are available on the older HyperDeck Studio Mini, but not available on the HD Mini, I'm sorry, the Stu HyperDeck Studio Mini HD. And it also adds an SDI loop out, which is really nice if you want to be able to change the same, same signal from, to, into multiple devices. So whatever signal comes in on your SDI input is also available on your SDI loop out, regardless of whether you're play button, playing or recording or whatever. All right, so obviously the differences between this and the lower end model, it has a remote out, it has a monitor output, it has the HDMI input, and that has this, these additional two SDIs on the end for a B channel for alpha, and then the SDI loop out as well. Other than that, uh, the other big difference is this one, it does have the option of playing back and recording in 4K, some, same as the older HyperDeck Studio Mini. So it will do 4K at up to 30 frames per second, Again, it does not support alpha channels at, in 4K at 30 frames per second. The alpha channel capability is limited to 1080p at up to 60 frames per second. Take a look at the front side of the unit. We've obviously got some more buttons here compared to what we, what we had on the others. Uh, so we've got our eight buttons for transport control, but then we have also have buttons for navigating menus and doing searching here as well. All right, so we have the same, same search features that are available in the HyperDeck Studio HD Mini. So I'll press the search button and we're jogging, press it again, we're searching, and press it one more time, we're getting variable speed playback. This unit will go up to 50 times. I should mention, though, by the way, that the older SD Hyper HyperDeck Studio Mini will only do up to 16 times on playback and record. 
But one of the advantages this one has compared to the others is it actually has dedicated fast forward and rewind buttons. So you're able to search it up to 50, search at 50 times normal playback speed just by tapping a button. That makes it a little easier to find things rather than having to navigate through the menus in order to get, get to the, the search feature. All right, the other big difference that's on here is this has a couple of other buttons over here. So we have a remote button here, which allows you to toggle the ability to remotely control this on and off. So when you have the remote feature actually enabled, you're able to start playback from, say, the ATEM software control or other things like companion or whatever. You've got some options there. The remote feature can be turned on and off with that button. It also has something that's kind of unique uh, to this product line starting uh, fairly recently, and which is basically the option of being able to hear the audio. So if I double tap that there, that actually turns on the, this little tiny internal speaker that's available on the unit. There's also a headphone jack here as well, which gives you a way to monitor the audio, both for playback and for recording. And you probably noticed that on the back there are no audio connections, and you're going to find that to be true with all of the current models in their, their, in their product lineup. The Brackmagic does not currently offer a model other than their HyperDeck Extremes, which actually have audio inputs or outputs. And for that reason, I'm going to cover another older unit here in a few minutes. All right, other than that, it's uh, basically very similar to the HyperDeck Studio Mini HD, just at, gives you some additional buttons on the front, gives you 4K capability, gives you alpha key, gives you an HDMI input, and, and then the loop output on the SDI. So, again, very, very similar, but it gives you some additional capabilities. Uh, this, again, is a half rack unit, so you're able to get two of these side by side in one rack space, so you don't get quite the same density that you get with the HD Mini or with the older HyperDeck Studio Mini, but you can still get quite a few in a relatively small space. Now, one feature that's available on this HD Plus and the models above it is this monitor output. So we've got an SDI here on the back that allows you to connect up a monitor and see what's going on. And I've got that display here up on the screen right now. So obviously you got information about uh, the current mode, the current uh, codec that's being recorded, time code, uh, you've got uh, basically the status of your available disks, uh, audio levels, a lot of different information there that's very useful. Um, that is something that, again, is available on the HD Plus and above. It's not available on the HD Mini or the older Studio, HyperDeck Studio Mini. These models also have the ability to apply a lookup table or a LUT to the monitor output as well. So any of the models in this lineup that have the monitor output will allow you to do that. You're able to download a 3D cube file into the unit to let you preview what video would look like after some sort of uh, rudimentary processing. Uh, that would be useful if you're recording in... Uh, some of the various log codecs that are out there, so C-log, S-log, V-log, whatever, allows you to kind of see what the video would look like after it's been through a coloring process. Now that's just on the monitor output. It's not something that's actually recorded into the video file or available on the other outputs on the device. It's just there as a quick reference. So uh, the other thing I should mention is that monitor output is limited to 1080. It's not something that's available in 4K. So you'll, if you're recording in 4K, you're down resing a little bit. Uh, you can turn that overlay on and off in the software for these devices if you want to. So if you want to use that as an additional output, you can. But, uh, but that, that, again, that's, that is a very handy feature that's available on the uh, HyperDeck Studio 4K Plus and above. Now, pricing on these is $695 as of the time I'm recording this. They are pretty readily available, so if this is something that you're interested in, they are pretty easy to get your hands on. Okay, the next model I want to take a look at is another discontinued model, but I wanted to bring this up because it has several features on it that are not available on the newer products. So if one of these features is something that you might particularly need, this might be a viable option for you. And again, these are not too hard to get a hold of. I see these pop up on eBay with some regularity. Uh, and, and they are fairly affordable for what they are as well. So this is the HyperDeck Studio Pro. This is a model that was announced many years ago. This unit does do 4K at up to, up to 30 frames per second, so a 6 gig SDI. And it has a lot of unique connections on the back. So let's actually just take a look and I'll kind of explain why I like this one compared to some of the others. All right, looking at the panel on the back, you can see this thing has a lot of different connectors. Uh, starting over here on the left, we've got our normal ones. We've got power, we've got Ethernet, we've got a USB for configuration. It has a Thunderbolt port, so allow Thunderbolt 2, which is probably not that super useful in this day and age, although it does still work with modern computers with a, with a simple adapter. That allows you to do video capture and playback through that device. It has HDMI input and output. It has your remote jack. 
But here's where things start to get interesting. These three jacks right here are actually analog audio or analog video inputs, and then we have corresponding outputs over here as well. So you're able to record old school analog video, both standard definition and high definition, at up to uh, 1080p. You can and that can be in composite S video or in component video, in any, in any one of those formats. It works with all of those. Now the other thing we have here is four connections for SDI input and four connections for SDI output. These are not necessarily used that much anymore, but what's it, what essentially what's going on here is this allows us to send uh, high definition or even 4K over multiple SDIs to split up the bandwidth. So if we, we happen to be using cabling or other equipment that doesn't support all of the high bandwidth that we need in order to do those higher frame rate or higher resolution signals, we can split that up across multiple cables uh, in reduced bandwidth. So Again, something we don't do much of today, but that is available on this unit. Now come over here, we have a monitor output. This is not the same as the monitor output on the newer ones. It's essentially just the same video that's coming out the SDI output. So it's a, more or less a duplicate of that. We have a reference in for Genlock. Here's where things really get different though. We have audio, in, audio connections. So we have an RCA, a set of RCAs here for stereo audio input. We also have XLR audio and input over here as well. I, I think this is something that's sorely lacking from the current models of HyperDex, uh, the ability to extract audio from your video playback, uh, something I do all the time. I don't actually run audio for my production system through my ATEM. I, I do all my audio production on a separate audio mixer. And so whenever I need to do video playback and I need the audio for that, I've got to extract that audio out of the video somehow. As make this, this particular unit makes that very easy to do because it has XLRs right there. So I just connect the XLR output to this straight into my audio mixer. And that makes video playback so, so much easier than the other models where I would have to do a separate device in order to de-embed the audio coming out of the SDI or the HDMI on one of those. So that makes that this very unique. This also has time code like some of the other ones do, but it does use the more common XLR instead of the BNCs for that. Now, compared to the other models that I've shown you, the other big change here is this uses SD, SSDs instead of SD cards. So this records on solid state disks. These are just your st standard serial ATA uh, drives that are available in many different places. You can pick these up even at your, your local Best Buy or whatever. So if you happen to uh, want to record uh, high bandwidth, onto inexpensive media, SSDs are not a bad way to go. The other thing that becomes unique and available only with the products that have SSDs is the ability to record uncompressed. So with all the other ones, you're recording a compressed format. So ProRes, DNxHD or DNxHR, or H.264 or H.265, those are all compressed formats. If you need the ultimate quality, then SSDs are really the only way to achieve that. And in order to get that, you have to get into these professional models of HyperDex. So even though this is an older unit, it still offers a lot of cool functionality, because, primarily because of those audio inputs. Uh, so if someone needs audio in and out of their unit, this, is, might, not, this might not necessarily be a, a bad way to go. So anyway, that is the HyperDeck Studio Pro. Now there's one HyperDeck in this uh, lineup that I don't have, and it exists between these two. So we have the HD Plus here, and then we have the 4K Pro, and there's one in the middle that's called the HD Pro. So it's really kind of a hybrid between these two. So it offers the same, most of the same capabilities as this model, but it does it in this rack form factor with the addition of the SSDs. So whenever I talk about the capabilities of the two, you can keep, kind of keep that in mind that that HD Pro model exists right in between these two. All right, so that said, move this one out of the way. I can talk about the 4K Pro. This is the top of the line within this portion of their product lineup, excluding the extreme models. Again, this is a, 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 their professional model. 4K Pro supports 4K video at up to 60 frames per second. So if you want to do 60 frames per second in 4K, this is the only, only model in this part of the lineup that actually has that capability. It is a obviously a 1U form factor, so one unit is going to take up one rack space in your equipment rack. And uh, it offers some capabilities that are not available on some of the others. So obviously we've got some SSD slots here uh, that are can be used for playback and record. It also has, it does have SD card slots in there as well on the front. So you're able to get four different uh, cards or recording devices, media, 
on, on the front panel there as well. It also has the same USB fu functionality, USB-C functionality that's available on the other units as well. Now, if we flip around and take a look at the back, this is where things aren't quite as different as one might hope. So, turn this here a little bit. So, one Big upgrade we have on this one compared to the lower end units is it has dual redundant power supplies on IEC connectors in addition to the 12 volt. And this has 10 gig ethernet instead of the one gig ethernet. So it makes it a little, little faster to, to copy video footage in and out of the device. But other than that, it's essentially the same thing as the HD plus that I showed a moment ago with the one exception being that time code is on XLRs instead of BNCs. Other than that, the rear connection, the rear panel is more or less the same. Now let's take a look at, a closer look at the front. Again, we have the SSD slots in addition to the SD card slots, and I have an SD card slot in there right now. That gives you four different media slots here on the front. We've got the same connections over here, the remote button for toggling remote control on and off, and then a button for turning audio through the built-in speaker on and off, as well as the headphone jack over there. The same media controls as the HD+, Plus, the same buttons here as the HD+. Plus. What it adds, though, is three buttons over here for shuttle, jog, and scroll that are not available on the HD Plus model. The other thing that's unique to this one is this knob here is very different. This actually has an electronic clutch on it. And what that does is it allows it to stop or do a virtual detents as you happen to be navigating through menus or whenever you're doing playback uh, navigation. So let me say, for example, I put this thing into shuttle mode it actually stops. It actually physically stops the knob as I move through the zero point of the different speeds. So you probably can't hear that, but it is actually clicking and stopping the wheel from moving as I hit that particular speed. So the other thing is, as I go through the menus and rotate through here, as I get to the end, it will not let me navigate past the end. It actually locks the knob in place at the two extreme ends. So you get to the first menu, it stops. Rotate to the right, get to the last menu there, it stops. The same thing as you navigate through the various options. You get to the bottom, and the knob actually physically stops moving. So it's electronically locked in place. So not necessarily a killer feature, but it's something that is a little bit nice in order to get that, that feedback as to where it happened to be. But other than that, uh, this really is essentially a 4K 60 version of the HD+, Plus with the option of recording onto SSDs. The other thing that makes this particular unit unique in the lineup is that it's able to do alpha fill and key on video at up to 4K in 60 frames per second. It's the only model in the lineup other than the extremes that has that capability. So if you want to do 4K playback with an alpha channel, this is really your only option that's available as part of Blackmagic product lineup, unless you get into the extreme products, which are a heck of a lot more money. The other thing that makes this particular product unique in the lineup is the ability to record ultra high def in H.265 or HEVC files. HEVC, for those who are not familiar, is a much higher efficiency codec. Your files in HEVC tend to be about half the size that they would be in H.264. So you're able to pack a lot more data into onto your SD card or whatever. Um, this unit, again, is the only one in the product lineup that offers that capability. So if that's something you want to take advantage of, then this is really going to be your only option. So this unit is currently selling for $1,495. Again, pretty readily available. I see this, these for sale pretty much everywhere in stock. So if that's something you're interested in, that this particular unit is going to fulfill, fulfill, your needs, fulfill your needs and it's going to be readily available and easy for you to get a hold of. So that about wraps it up. A lot of information here. I know this is going to be a lot to take, take in, but there's a lot of cool functionality. So to kind of summarize, talk about some of the things that are same, similar across all the different models. All of these offer recording in ProRes, in DNxHD or DNxHR if you're doing 4K. Uh, they also offer H.264 on all of these except the older Studio, uh, HyperDeck Studio Pro. Uh, in terms of connect connectivity, all of them offer Ethernet. The rack mount 4K Pro only will also offer 10 gig Ethernet as well. And with the exception of the HyperDeck Studio Pro, you can use FTP to transfer files on and off at, up at 1 gigabit per second. Again, 10 gigabit per second on the 4K Pro.
In terms of connectivity, all of them offer SDI output except for the Shuttle HD and SDI inputs for recording. And if you need HDMI, all of them have HDMI outputs. Uh, the ones that do not have HDMI inputs, however, are the HyperDeck Studio HD or Mini HD and the older HyperDeck Studio Mini. Uh, they only offer SDI on the inputs. Now, in terms of alpha keying, you're going to find that in the HD Plus. You're going to find that in the older HyperDeck Studio Mini. You find that in the 4K Pro, and also the one that I don't have here, the 4K HD, as well. Uh, although, with the exception of the Pro 4K, all of them limit that capability to half of the total video bandwidth that is available. USB-C connection that's on the back. Uh, all of them, aside from the two older models, offer the ability to play back and record video on USB-C connected flash drives. They also offer the ability to do USB webcam. So if you plug the USB-C connection into a computer, you'll be able to get the video that's being played back or recorded over that USB-C connection as if it's simulating a webcam. Again, not available on the older unit, so the HyperDeck Studio Mini or the HyperDeck Studio Pro. But all the, all the current models do offer that functionality. In terms of the ability to play video off of the Blackmagic Cloud products, the only one that we know for sure is going to be able to do that is the Shuttle HD, although I suspect that that's probably going to be added to these other models as well, particularly the, the 4K Pro. I can't imagine that they would not include that on the high-end unit when it's included on the base unit. But again, we have, I have no confirmation on that one way or the other. Now, in terms of product availability, Shuttle HD is a little bit hard to get right now, although I'm sure that's going to improve. HD Plus is readily available. The HD Mini is readily available. The 4K Pro and the 4K Plus are also readily available as well. So you shouldn't have any trouble getting your hands on any of those models at this particular point in time when I'm recording this video. The older HyperDeck Studio Mini and the 4K Pro are going to be available only as used units that are no longer being manufactured. So check your e local eBay or Facebook Marketplace or other sort of similar uh, product sales uh, website in order to pick up one of those if that's what you're interested in. So I think that's going to about do it for now. I know that's a lot of information all at once, but I appreciate you sticking with me to the end. Uh, there are subtle differences between these different products from one to the next, and so it's a little hard. To, it can be a little bit hard to sort that out on your own. Hopefully I've simplified that a little bit for you. If you're interested in purchasing any of these products, I'd really appreciate you using the links that I've had pop up throughout the video and available in the video description down below. That really helps out the channel quite a lot. Those are affiliate links that provide a little bit of a, a, little bit of a percentage of the sales. Uh, no additional cost to you, so very much appreciated there as well. If you have questions about any one of these, you can feel free to leave those in the description down below, or even better, join me over on my Discord channel with a lot of other members of the production community. Hundreds of people have signed up over there and are, are very helpful. So if you got a question and it's not something that I'm available to answer or can't answer, somebody else there on the forum probably can. We have a lot of discussions about black, particularly Blackmagic products over there on, on Discord, so if that's something you're interested in talking about, please join us there as well. That's going to do it for now, so thanks everybody for watching, and have a fantastic day.